What's up, everyone? We're back with another top five exclusive right here at McGovernPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I'm Spencer. And today on the top five, we will be talking about our top five non-Disney animated films. Uh, in the animated world, obviously, Disney is a pretty big name, uh, but there are a pretty good amount of other great animated films from other studios. Um, so, yeah. This is this is tough work, man. Trying to come up with the top five. Like, I do not. I do. I totally empathize with you and Brandy trying to do this. I Brandy, having, you listening? Yeah, I was having a lot of trouble. I was like, oh, is it four, four, three, two? Oh, it's tough. All right. So, um, did you want to start off this time, or? Uh, yeah, sure. Since you are the guest, sure, I'll start off. Um, my number five is a series or the feature version of a series that I've long been a fan of, and that is Wallace and Gromit in the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Um, I probably, in terms of my Wallace and Gromit fandom, love uh, The Wrong Trousers best, Mm -hmm. but Curse of the Were-Rabbit is just a fun extension of the whole series. You know, Wallace and Gromit are a pretty amazing sort of, like, tandem, like, the main character is a human who's mm-hmm. sort of dopey and this dog that's silent who doesn't speak right. who basically ends up having to clean up after all of his messes and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's just a really good sort of slapstick comedic sort of combination and yeah but it's really clever too like all all of, all of their work um yeah so yeah no and that's uh, Nick Park of Ardman Studios mm-hmm. um the past ones were claymated, mm-hmm. which I really thought was cool. I believe the Curse of the Were Rabbit though is actually three D animated, mm-hmm. um, which is, I mean, it's, it still has the same look as always. You can tell an Armin product. Yeah, just wasn't, by there, looking. wasn't there a time where like each short like won like best animated short? Oh yeah, for, like, I'm pretty every sure. Time? Yeah, no, yeah. they're great. Like the yeah. shorts are wonderful, and you can get them all three together. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I definitely recommend checking those out. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on to my number five. Uh, I mentioned my number five pick when we were talking about weirdly creepy kids films. Mm. Uh, it's from 1982, and it is The Secret of Nim. Um, Secret of Nim. I remember. Now this one <laughs> kind of like has a special place in my heart because I remember when I was a little kid watching it like on a crappy VHS that my parents like recorded off the television Mm. and everything like that so it has like a nostalgia factor for me um for me it's one of those films that kind of represented like the dark animated films that came out in 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 the 90s um you have (laughs) I'm just like it's funny because like I always get this and mouse mixed up you know (laughs) that like Nazi mouse thing like I always get those two well no Nazi mouse is in this it's pretty dark Um, but it is pretty dark you have Mrs. Brisby whose kid is ill she can't get him out of uh Fitzgibbon farm so she goes to the great owl who supposed to be a friend but goddamn he's pretty creepy he's pretty mm-hmm. scary um and he tells her to go see like this secret lair of rats who are like super powered for some reason and it's just this really interesting really kind of dangerous adventure that they go on um i really enjoy that film um i mean of all those films like that happened in the 80s like american tale and everything mm-hmm. like that this this one really takes the cake for me yeah it's so. a good good selection i definitely dig that one yep um And when we talk about non-Disney cartoons, um, obviously we're talking non-Pixar as well, since Mm -hmm. we're lumping those in with Disney. And a couple years ago, there was a great debate over the best animated film of 2008. Mm -hmm. Um, I came down in the Camp Wally, but that's not to say I didn't like my number four pick, which is kung fu panda Mm. i thought kung fu panda was a really really fun film Mm -hmm. um i'm not honestly a huge jack black fan Mm -hmm. but i thought he was restrained enough with his character that it made it entertaining Mm -hmm. um it's still very sweet story which i think is one of the things that a lot of the ones you'll notice i have are ultimately at their core sweet stories Mm -hmm. um i think there's a little too much in the terms of the cast especially as you get into kung fu panda 2 Mm -hmm. there's too many characters that draw too much time but at the core you have uh jack black uh shifu his uh like master master mentor, yeah. uh dustin hoffman and then you have ian mcshane as tai Lung. Mm-hmm. and those three i think are fantastic in the roles and that really just makes it entertaining yeah kung fun. fu panda was is is a lot of fun um i mean I, a little point of contention i actually think kung fu panda 2 was better than kung fu panda mm-hmm. it just i mean it does kind of like repeat a lot of the same elements yeah. but to me it made 
everything about Kung Fu Panda 1 better. I mean, the animation, the action, the comedy, that's, it was all a step higher for me. That's true. I just would have preferred Kung Fu Panda 2 to be more about the Furious 5. I'd like to know more about them. Yeah, but I, I, I still enjoyed it. I'm yeah. not going to complain. All right. Okay, moving on to my number four uh, animated film. Uh, my number four was a movie that was a spin-off of one of my all-time favorite television shows. Hmm. Uh, it's from 1993, and it is Batman. Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, uh, yes, okay. The animated series, to me, was one of my all-time favorite cartoon mm -hmm. shows. It was one of my all-time favorite television shows, just period. Yeah. Um, to me, this Batman is the definitive Batman. Uh, I, Whenever like I read a comic book uh, with Batman in it, I hear Kevin Conroy's voice. Well, he's coming um, to Emerald City Comic Con this year. I know, so I know. And whenever I like read the dialogue from Joker, I think of Mark Hamill. I think those two guys are mm -hmm. the quintessential Batman and Joker. Uh, the animation then in that film was just amazing. Um, it's awesome to see you know cartoons that are for children and for adults also um it's just you have like this great mixture of romance and danger um you have bruce wayne uh and his relationship with his long lost love andrea uh beaumont uh, but then at the same time he's like fighting this mysterious creature called the phantasm who's doing a lot of bad things and batman's getting blamed uh because of that it's a really cool movie uh yeah, it's just when I think of like animated films and the great animated films, it's too bad that this movie isn't mentioned more. There's often. a lot of really good animated comic based films, especially from DC. They mm -hmm. really do a good job with them. So yeah. definitely, definitely can appreciate that one as well. Absolutely. Um, my next one, number three, is a film that is sort of the exception to the rule in terms of this guy's career, and that is Fantastic Mr. Fox by mm -hmm. Wes Anderson. Mm -hmm. I am much more middle of the road about Wes Anderson than most people. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of his work is so similar. Mm -hmm. um, but the Fantastic Mr. Fox was so different that it really stood out so prominently to me. Right. I also was a huge Roald Dahl fan growing up. I read right. all the Roald Dahl books. Mm -hmm. And granted, this is definitely a departure somewhat from the original Roald Dahl story since it was like, I don't know, 70 pages or whatever. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. But it, it's, it's just so funny. Like, you talk about a film that works for adults and children. Like, this one definitely fits into that bill. And I just, I think, you know, George Clooney was great. You know, the way they joke and say, like, curse instead of curse words and stuff like that. I just, I found it to be a really fun, interesting spin on a story yeah. using animation i'm i'm right there with you i i'm kind of in the same boat where you know i admire wes anderson but i don't love him to the extent that everyone else does um and the cool thing about um fantastic mr fox is that it's a departure from wes anderson's other work but when you watch it you can clearly see that this is wes anderson doing his thing um stylistically wise and everything like mm -hmm. that um yeah you're absolutely right it's funny it's cute it's clever uh the animation is kind of that old school like um stop motion yeah, animation which is really whatever, cool yeah. um yeah yeah i mean i would probably put that as probably one of my favorite wes anderson's for sure oh it's probably my it's number one for me i yeah. love that film okay so let's move on to my number three um a little bit of a cheat because I believe Disney actually distributed it, distributed this film, but it was not made by them. Uh, it's from 2001. Uh, we are going to go to Japan with Spirited Away. Mm. Um, Hayao Miyazaki. Probably, when you think of the legends of animated film, you have Walt Disney and Hayao Miyazaki is like right there, like right next to him. Mm. Uh, Spirited Away, it's kind of this... Alice in Wonderland adventure. You have this young girl who's trying to move to the suburbs with her family. Her family takes a wrong turn and all of a sudden she gets whisked away into this really odd place where she meets like Japanese gods and demons and m amazing like creatures and they're all kind of hanging out in this uh, like bathhouse and she somehow finds a job there like working and it's such a weird and strange story but just like everything else that um, Miyazaki has done, we get like pulled in with how creative mm. and how beautiful and mm -hmm. how touching this this story is. Um, just one of those great, great movies, uh, live action or animated. It's uh, it's like one of the quintessential sort of Japanimation type things when mm -hmm. I think of that and maybe like the Ghost in the Shell or the two that immediately pop in my mm -hmm. mind when you say like Japanimation or something mm -hmm. like that. So definitely, definitely a well done film for sure. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, 
Now, when I talk my top two, and we're talking number two here, mm. I had a really difficult time deciding one and number two. <laughs> and if you ask me five minutes from now, it might flip-flop, honestly. <laughs> but my number two is a film from two years ago, and that is How to Train Your Dragon. Mm, yes. I absolutely love this film. Right. I was a little skeptical going in. I heard some people sort of hyping, and I was like, I don't really understand it from the previews. Mm -hmm. And I went and I saw it, and I thought it was one of the sweetest stories I've seen in probably the last yeah, you know we might as well talk about it a little bit more because this is my number two also awesome so. awesome it's it's just so it's so well done the story of a, a boy who goes against his culture befriends this creature of fear mm -hmm. um that creature then goes so far as to like sacrifice himself on several occasions mm -hmm. in defense of the boy it's just such a profound story oh yeah and then there's that entire scene where they kind of like learn to work with each other mm -hmm. all the way up to the part where um hiccup teaches toothless to fly uh with a with a hurt wing it's yeah. just very very touching and then i mean we can continue on we could talk about hiccup's relationship with his father which is also a key key element in that film and um, i mean i think the relationship with toothless ultimately is what connects him back with his father and i think i think the scene where his father finally understands toothless and like his importance mm -hmm. is Oh, I, I tear up whenever I see that oh, scene. Yeah, I think yeah. it's so sweet. The final, the final scenes of that movie is like, wow, if that doesn't get you, I, I don't know what does. Um, yeah, I mean, it was one of those times, you know, Pixar is such like a dominant force in, mm -hmm. in the animated world that just that one time, I think, you know, DreamWorks might have got him, you know? Oh, no, I totally agree. And I yeah. think it's, it's and I know amazing people, to say. people love Toy Story 3. Yeah, no, you know? exactly. I mean, Toy, Toy Story, Story 3 is a great film, yeah. but like How to Train Your Dragon was so original and fresh. And got to give a shout out to, uh, was it Dean Dubois, who was one of the co-directors of the film, who actually lives in Seattle yeah. now, so... Woo! Way to represent King County. Yeah. Um, well, but great film. I mean, the score was amazing. Everything. I love that just, score. The animation was beautiful. And then, like, like wow. people like Jared Baruchel, mm -hmm. like, I definitely didn't feel good going in with him as a lead actor. I thought it was going to be too distracting, but he was perfect for that role. That, that was the kind of thing, like, DreamWorks is usually kind of, that animated studio was like, oh, this is the studio where they have big star names, like, Shrek, headlining. Kung Fu Panda. Absolutely. Like, and then this time, it's like... Yeah, we have right names, roles. but they work within their roles, so it's yeah. perfect. Yep. All right, I guess that brings us to uh, my number one, and that is a film that is kind of amazing to think about in terms of the rest of this guy's career, but it's in 1999's The Iron Giant. Yes. Um, Brad Bird, since gone on to do The Incredibles, Ratatouille, mm -hmm. and The New Mission Impossible, supremely yes. talented guy. Yeah. The Iron Giant's story of a boy who befriends this robot that he finds. Mm -hmm. um, the government tries to come in and kill it. Ultimately, the robot saves the world from the military and their yeah. nuclear weapons. And, you know, it's just, it's much like sort of the story of Toothless and Hiccup. Mm -hmm. The story of, uh, was it, the Iron Giant and uh, Hogarth Hughes. Right. Um, it's just such a beautiful relationship that they develop. And it's amazing to see this creature that should be feared, but ultimately is is really a friend. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think the relationship that they form is amazing. The one kind of weird thing to think in retrospect is that the voice of Hogarth is uh, Eli Marenthal, mm -hmm. who is the... Uh, Stifler's brother in the American Pie movies. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, when we, you know, talked about doing this list, I definitely thought about the Iron Giant, but I knew you were going to mention it. Yeah. So it's I it's thought, well, you it's know. right there with How to Train Your Dragon. They have so yeah. much parallels in terms of like those two cultures combining the yeah, world I'm, around, not understanding until I later. mean they both they both kind of share that sort of E. T. mentality. Oh totally, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And maybe maybe that's because, you know, I grew up watching E. T. that I love these films. There there you go. It works. All right. So moving on to my number one uh, non-Disney animated film. This film left such an impression on me that I don't know if I can see it again because it is that powerful. Mm. Um, we're going to go to Japan once again, 1988, and it is Grave of the Fireflies. Yeah, I know um, you Brand you and Brandy have talked about this film, and honestly, yeah, I haven't seen it, like but the, you guys have spoke so highly of it. Yeah, it's, it's a, man, it's the story of a brother and a sister, really, really young, uh, during World War II. Their town gets bombed, so they have to leave. They're pretty much on their own, and... Um, the entire story is sort of like this neo-realistic neo uh, kind of uh, tale where you have two two young 
people that tr just try to survive i mean just try to live day by day um you know trying to find something to do trying to find work trying to find something to eat mm -hmm. and just very just going through all this trouble um battling sickness and everything like that uh, just incredibly well made uh the characters really really kind of pull at your heartstrings mm. and just seeing them kind of just go on and just go through this journey it's so heart heart wrenching by the end of the film it's like oh it's like Oh, I, like it, it hurts so much to yeah, see what no. happens. To the, them, the way so. you guys have spoken about it is definitely on my list of films I want to see. It just, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's one of those ones I have to like be in a mood. To yeah, see it's not one of those movies tough. that you go to like you know be happy when yeah. you come out. You know, yeah. but because it, even though it's kind of like really sad, it doesn't did you know, like deteriorate how beautiful that film mm. is. So very good. All right. So I guess that does it for our top five non-Disney animated films. Uh, there are a lot out there. So if there's any that you'd like to mention, please let it be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.